Hi everyone, it's Saturday morning on the 24th of June. I've just had a week away from the plot and I'm back and everything's gone mad. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is pick off some of these munch too. And they were a bit sp sparse when they uh, germinated, but they're producing loads of uh, pods. So uh, I'll get that done now. As I just mentioned in the, the earlier clip, I've been away for a week. Uh, I went to Germany for a week. Um, wife stayed at home and uh, she took turns with my cousin to, to water everything on the plot. And I left everything pretty neat and tidy. Um, but of course we had the really warm weather, so um, we spent quite a lot of time watering. But having come back and um, seen the result of the weather and you know all the additional watering that they've given it, I, it I can't believe how much things have grown. You can see the the sunflowers there. They're all starting to uh, flower. We've got dark, reddy brown ones, rusty ones, and uh, yellow ones. And the peas as well. There was uh, no sign of a, a pea pod on the peas before I went. That's a week, exactly a week ago. And now, if we just take a closer look, you can see not only have the plants shot up but they're covered in pods as well um, lots of them these are the, the Galvin and Wonder but they've grown about six or eight inch I would say in a week and, and I, I don't even remember seeing many flowers uh, last, uh, last weekend the uh, broad beans they're all coming on as well and the cousins taking their uh, a bag full of those. I'm, I'm not really a, a broad bean fan, but he, he is, and uh, so he's taking some. We've put a few more dailies in, and we've got the odd one or two flowers coming. We've taken a couple off because they're a bit uh, top heavy with the flowers. Um, you can see a nice yellow one there, and in the corner there's a there's a red one as well. Sweet corn shot up as well, as you can see. All looks really robust and nice and thick. And this morning, just after the last clip, well I didn't film it, I took about three large punnets of strawberries and that takes us a tally to 18 and the big ones as well, not the shallow ones. So uh, they're really like one and a half punnets. Some of the other flowers are looking nice as well. These have all opened up now. They're quite nice. The tomatoes in the greenhouses, they are really, really uh, sturdy now. And I, I can't believe how much the tomatoes have grown as well. So I'll show you those. We'll just start in the, the big greenhouse. Well, I'm pretty convinced that the tomatoes that I'm growing this year in the large greenhouse, that they're uh, they're a little bit more vigorous than they were last year. Most of them are the same varieties, um, but I, I put it down personally to the, the quality of light that we've had, um, because it has been very bright since uh, spring. Um, we've not had you know, constant cloud as we have in recent years, we, where we've gone several weeks and it's been overcast, and that really does make a difference to uh, photosynthesis and growth. So um, that, that's my personal view anyway. Um, but as you can see, there are lots of tomatoes. These are all beef steaks. And just 10 days ago, they were pea sized and there were only one or two. Then last week, they were like marbles. And a week later, well, you can see if I put my hand next to these, <coughs> they're already a standard uh, globe sized tomato, aren't they? But they should grow much bigger than that. And we've got four or five tomatoes on each cluster on the first cluster the tomatoes on this side they're about four feet high and uh, I flew back last night I've been to Germany for a week and this is the first time really that I've uh, paid any attention to the tomatoes I've watered them um, but but there are quite a lot of side shoots it doesn't take long as you can see there um, and some of them are, as I said some of them are prone to uh, having split leaders and then moving on and having other split leaders, you end up with about 20 stems at the top if you're not careful. So uh, I might have to do a bit of judicious pruning, I think. Um, but they do look well. 
and uh, grapevine seems to be doing alright as well. The grapes are uh, forming now. Um, probably got about a dozen bunches. So uh, that's my job now anyway, to do some uh, side shooting and pruning. So I'll, I'll get on with that. I might take you around the top allotment as well, because there's a, a bit of growth on there. Took quite a few things this morning as well, some turnips and um, spring onions and lettuce and upended a few pots of potatoes. Uh, what else did we take? Oh, munch too as well. Oh yeah, you saw that in the clip earlier. So um, we should be uh, eating pretty much completely from uh, the allotment veg over the next few days anyway. So I'll, uh, I'll get on with this and I'll catch you later. Looking at the onions now on the, the second plot, and uh, these had a bit of a slow start. I think that were most people's experience at the start of this season. Uh, these are heat treated red onions, red barren, and they were a little bit late to arrive, as were the, uh, the white heat treated uh, onions as well. So um, I had them in modules for a short while till they showed some green and then they went out, but they've started to thicken up quite a little bit now. Um, Nothing as yet has gone to seed, you wouldn't expect it to really at this stage, but the onions do look nice and healthy. I've got one here bulbing up, as you can see, you can see that, just there. And the white ones there starting as well. These are supposed to be a little bit more resistant to uh, mildew. And the, these ones are called Caraval Pink, I think. They're a French one. These are like a rosy coloured one. Not quite red, but, but not white. Tinged with uh, pink. Uh, they look okay as well. They're like a, a shallot at this, this stage, but the onions look good. The form of the onions look good. All going on all right. So, uh, they look quite good. The parsnips, they've gone berserk as well, they've really grown. And, and look look at the, the raspberries, the autumn fruiting raspberries. They've gone mad. <laughs> the uh, second uh, batch of parsnips that were sown, they're ready to be thinned out, I think, now. And uh, they, they're doing alright as well. So we should be alright for parsnips. On this side, the beans are coming on. This was a broad, broad drill that was sown, so we're quite pleased with that as well. The second wave of new potatoes, the Pentland Javelin, they've yet to uh, break ground. The Brussels have uh, shot up as well and thickened out. And as you can see, because they've been covered, we've not weeded, and uh, that'll be the job probably if not tomorrow then next weekend and we'll, we'll probably take the covers off the cabbage at the top there but, uh, things have really really shot up still not tried any uh, potatoes in the ground but the the flowers on the charlotte are just about finishing now and the kestrel and the lady crystal i've not really seen there's an odd flower but i've not really seen very much um, Sometimes you wait and you wait for flowers, and they don't always come with uh, new potatoes. Um, you know, they can make a fleeting appearance, and that's that. Um, but it, there might still be a lot of potatoes under there. So uh, don't just think because you've not seen any flowers that you know you've still got a way to go because you might not have. So uh, we will have a route around at some stage. You might even lift one of each route. Um, don't really need them at this stage because, as you can see, just up there. I've upended a few uh, pots of potatoes. We've got about £10 at home in new potatoes, Charlotte, so uh, I'm in no rush. I um, don't know if you can see down the edge of the, the path as well. We've got about six or seven dahlias in there. We had spares, so that's where we've put them. And if you look up there, you can see the sunflowers are out, the dwarf ones. I've just tied in some of the, uh, the bigger ones at the back. We'll take a closer look at those. This is the, the no dig plot, and you can see, as I say, the uh, the dwarf sunflower have come through. The sunflowers have done better this year, and I think that's because I kept them back in the greenhouse for longer, until they were quite sturdy. Um, if you get a rabbit in, 
um, if you're unlucky. And uh, I did see one as I arrived today um, and I chased him off. I don't know how he got in, um, possibly under the barn. Uh, but if you get a rabbit in, then they, they tend to dig them up and they'll, they'll eat the roots or, or they'll gnaw through the, the, the stem. So um, we held them back, as I said, and uh, they seem to have uh, thrived this year. Quite a few squash coming on as well. Um, not very big, but they all look healthy, which is quite surprising really because they're not in uh, well rotten manure. It's uh, it's still quite fresh. It's probably only about three or four months old, and a couple of the squash were showing signs of yellowing, and that's probably because of the uh, lack of nitrogen or nitrogen depletion as the uh, the manure was uh, breaking down. I said on a, an earlier update that I hoped we'd uh, hang on to uh, the purple sprouting broccoli. I think I put 15 in and I said if we're lucky we might get six because the pigeons will eat the rest. And the following day the pigeons are just about eating them all. <laughs> so I have got six left so I got me uh, my wish. Uh, you can see one here. I just had to make some and it's blown off. I had to make some uh, rough and ready covers out of chicken wire to keep the little uh, pests off. So uh, we're about six, as I say. Took my first beetroot as well this morning. You can see it just there on the edge. Just twisted the, the ones that were large enough out because they were multi-sown and left the ones that were left. Well, look at the beds. Quite impressed with the, the kohlrabi and the cabbage. Some of the cabbage are, are forming heads now, uh, starting. These are the greyhound, um, and they are quick. That's why they're called greyhound. So, uh, kohlrabi, there are a few that are golf ball sized, but none of them really ready to take yet, but I don't think it'll be long. Still loads of lettuce, and the silver skin onions, they're starting to form bulbs now down here. Um, I'm tempted to uh, do a little bit of thinning out, but I think they will separate then, uh, as they grow, so uh, it may not be necessary. Taking quite a lot of spring onions as well, as you can see there are, there are spaces now, and the zebra and shallots, they're still doing well, but again, the bed needs to be weeded. And the dozen or so ambrosia sweet corn, they, they've shot up as well, they're about, well, getting on for two foot six, nearly three foot tall, and then a, a second batch of uh, spring onion and a couple of spare lettuce that I had. Uh, just take the outside leaves off those, as I said, in an earlier update. So uh, all in all, everything's looking all right. Uh, have a quick look in the small greenhouse. And again here in the top greenhouse, you can see the tomatoes have gone riot. This is the F1 Zakora. Um, that's like a, a triple truss, the first one. There are three uh, like separate trusses with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine. Between eight and ten pairs. So but you're looking at about twenty, eighteen to twenty on each of those. So and actually there's that one subdivides there. So uh, I mean that could be the best part of possibly forty, thirty-five, forty tomatoes on that first truss. Um, and then there's another truss a little bit higher and then another third and you can see it's quite interesting <laughs> that the tops of the plants are turning away towards the sun and away from the canes as you can see um, and they have a habit of doing that do uh, cherry tomatoes so they need to be tied in and we'll try not to break them and the sun gold as well lots of tomatoes on those Again, three trusses, so they're all sort of keeping pace with one another. And some of the ones at the back here, these are quite interesting. These are the, I'll try and show you these, try and get in if we can. They're nice, aren't they? They're the uh, Japanese black tree filler. I've put my hand at the side and try and do it without getting leaves in the way. You can see they're uh, a decent size already. I can see that. And uh, they're pear shaped when they uh, when they reach maturity. 
they're uh, quite pleased about those. And some of the other beef steaks, I think there's two beef steaks at the back. They're okay. One of them, the country taste, it was so hot when the first truss formed, when the flowers first uh, opened up, that they uh, aborted the flowers. So uh, we've had to wait for uh, second and subsequent trusses. But you can see again the number of, the number of uh, stems, several split leaders. So I've got to spend the next hour in here now uh, doing these as well. So I'll get on with that and I'll catch you later. And we'll just finish off this uh, update with a, a quick look in the middle greenhouse. And I've just pruned and tied all these uh, plants in. We've got a couple of sun gold tomato plants, about five or six uh, cucumbers and as you can see we've got cucumbers coming, we've got one or two that should be ready within a week, there's one there and a big one at the back and then there are others and same over here on this plant as well so again because of the weather I think the cucumbers are further on than they were last year by about the third week in July last year I'd only had four cucumbers off and I would imagine by that time this year, that's in another three weeks time, I'll have had probably a dozen or twenty off um, because they're not that far away. Got some Cape gooseberries or Inca berries down here at the bottom, four plants, they're growing rapidly as well and, and I'm still awash with lettuce leaf, I've got some down here, some up the top, a couple of trays that are just germinating and I still haven't potted on um, my peppers or my aubergines so that's my job for tomorrow and that'll be in uh, probably the next uh, update. Leeks are still to go in as well but we're hoping for rain because if you look out there it's the flat bit just beyond the uh, five rows of potatoes that went in recently that's where the leeks are going and the ground's so dry we can't really make the hole so if we don't get any rain I'm going to water that bed tomorrow the day after and the day after that and then they'll get put in because the, uh, the soil should stick together a little bit better and the uh, the holes will stay in, in shape um, so we should have some nice uh, blanched white leeks down below here, got well, the next batch of kohlrabi and they're going to go in the bed where the overwintering onions were. So um, they're a little bit spindly, I've not had much room. They get good sun on that side, the window side, around this side it's a little bit shaded. Um, so uh, they'll be hardened off and they'll, they'll be going out as well. So that's it for this update. Sorry it's been uh, a little bit thrown together that's mainly because as I say I've had a, a week off in between um, and I'm going to be catching up playing catch up as you do with allotments next week um, I've got quite a bit of weeding to do I dare say I'll have lots of watering to do quite a bit of harvesting as well um, and a bit of potting on them and planting out so uh, hopefully we'll see the leeks planted in the next update some more kohlrabi um, and uh, well we'll see we might be surprised um, there's always something new on the allotment so take care thanks for viewing and i'll catch you later bye